If we spread apart the game releases from Q1 2022 to span the course of 365 days, it still would have been a pretty great year for video games. We've already seen some of the best we're gonna see all year, some sleeper hits, and some surprisingly great additions to long-standing franchises, and it's not even May yet. And then, of course, there's the rest of the year's offerings, assuming that we don't get any delays, which... Yeah, we're definitely gonna get delays, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. God of War Ragnarok, Stalker 2, Gotham Knights, Hogwarts Legacy, Starfield, not Breath of the Wild 2. Even if one or two of these or a few others like them hit this year, it's gonna round us out even better. But 2022 is so stacked that there are upwards of 15 games coming out in the next eight months that I'm really excited for, but keep forgetting about because there's just that much to keep track of. So in case you were curious about what we're getting between the obvious highlights, here's a bunch of fun games in a random order that I think are gonna be really cool. Eva West has been on my radar for a minute now. It comes out of Flying Wild Hog and Devolver Digital, the latter of which you almost definitely know about. They're always pumping out great stuff. And the former of which you may be less familiar with, but they've got a busy 2022 here. Having already released Shadow Warrior 3 and dropping Trek to Yomi early next month, it seems like the plan is to deliver a triple threat in 2022 with Eva West, a game without a solidified release date, which maybe makes it more prone to a delay, but it should be mentioned that this game was already pushed from 2021 and Shadow Warrior 3, which had also been delayed from 21 to 22, didn't get a release date until very close to its launch, so it's likely that this game is still set to hit this year. Flying Wild Hog has made some really fun, if inconsistent and flawed games with the Shadow Warrior series, which I've played all of, and Evil West feels like the insanity, action, and great twisted enemy design found in those games without the often grating humor that comes on the side. It also sports that over-the-shoulder camera and a mix of brawler and shooter mechanics that reminds me of Remnant from the Ashes, another really great game despite its occasional issues. Evil West is playable in co-op, which really strengthens that comparison, and has you play as a tech-infused Wild West cowboy eviscerating vampires, which like, come on, that's the dream. The gameplay looks interesting, the inspirations and the studio behind it are promising, and I love the way it looks. Let's just hope that it winds up hitting that release date. We can't talk about co-op vampire shooters this year without talking about Redfall, though, which is a really weird one to me, because aside from Starfield, this is the big Xbox exclusive for 2022. And it's being developed by Arcane Studios, whose reputation precedes them, so this should be sitting at the big boy table, but it always slips my mind that it's coming out so soon. Part of that's because this game's had no marketing since its reveal, other than that unintentional leak, but it's meant to hit this summer, which is like now-ish. Pretty close to now. You'd think that we'd have seen more about it, but we haven't, which kind of backs up that one leak from earlier this year that claims that the game's been delayed to a holiday 2022 release window instead. Either way, Redfall is an open-world first-person looter shooter a la Borderlands, but with an arcane twist and an apparently dynamic world that changes based on your decisions. The game does feature a campaign and customizable characters that all have their own special abilities, and the descriptions of it do read like your standard looter shooter, which is somewhat concerning, because a few of them are recent attempts at that have gone a bit poorly, but ultimately I have faith in Arcane and their utter weirdness to deliver a worthwhile product that has some staying power. Speaking of weird though, Scorn is described as an upcoming first person biopunk survival horror adventure game, and can I just ask, are you sure you put enough adjectives in that sentence? I remember Scorn being showcased back when we got our first rounds of next-gen gameplay from Xbox, and it was just gross and weird, but for some reason, I couldn't take my eyes off it. The entire setting feels alive and crooked, there's so many squelching sounds even when you interact with little contraptions, and everything feels like a living organism. The stuff that you touch, the space that you're exploring, and even your guns. Reloading feels like you're removing and reattaching limbs, and it's just all so odd. The game seems intensely atmospheric, and unflinchingly weird, and while I don't usually like games that are almost pure horror, I do have a real morbid curiosity about this one. It hits in October, and I'm curious how it's gonna do. If creeping through dark and spooky hallways in a survival horror shooter sparked any fond memories for you though, one, you're probably deranged, and two, you're also probably interested in the Dead Space remake, which, uh, got delayed to 2023. Bummer. But you're also probably interested in the Callisto Protocol, which hasn't been delayed to 2023 yet. It's being marketed as the spiritual successor to Dead Space and as an attempt to make the single scariest game on next-gen consoles, which sounds like a joy. The game takes place 200 years from now on Callisto, one of the moons of Jupiter, and follows the goings-on of the Black Iron Prison, and while details are currently scarce on it, that already sounds like a really interesting setup to the narrative. The game will have action elements, but the focus seems to be on the horror side of things, and we've heard word that more information will be coming soon. Although apparently keeping plenty of things a mystery is something that the team is actively trying to do with both the marketing, and the game itself. Am I really interested in this game? Yeah. Will I play it? 
Probably not, I'm scared. How about we do a few faster ones now? Bramble the Mountain King is a cute little adventure title where, god damn it, I thought we were done with the scary games. A mix of 3D and side-scrolling adventure horror akin to little nightmares with a bit of a Nordic folklore twist, Bramble the Mountain King looks like a creepy, enigmatic experience with horrifying imagery that I can't help but assume will probably end in a really sad, grotesque way. Dune Spice Wars is a, a Dune game, which th that definitely surprised me when it was first revealed. It's a real-time strategy game that launches in early access later this month, which doesn't really sound up my alley if I'm being honest, but if you're enjoying the IP hype around it, then this one might be for you. Neon White is a speedrunning FPS with a simple but genius premise. You pick up cars that you can use as weapons, like a shotgun or pistol or an SMG, but you can also discard them to gain a movement ability to get through levels faster. Using the cards in the right way to get through levels in the quickest way possible seems like a blast, and it also has dating sim elements? Yeah, games are weird, man. Planet of Lana is a gorgeous, hand-painted side-scroller that's shown off some incredible-looking scenes. Midnight Fight Express and Thymesia are both fun-looking action games that wear their inspirations proudly, which I discussed in detail in my video outlining my most anticipated indies of this year. Check that out for more games coming out that I don't keep forgetting about, but are still awesome. And with the announcement of The Quarry from Supermassive this year, a game that launches in June, you might have forgotten that there's also another Dark Pictures Anthology game set for this year as well, The Devil and Me. So if if you're a fan of that series and this developer, you got a lot to look forward to this year. Honestly, just horror fans in general are really set to have a great year from what we've already talked about. Let's close out though with a few more games that aren't as small as the last few, but I think have the potential to become real sleeper hits if they cash in on their promise. Stray captured people's attention in 2020 because it had a cat and robots, which yeah, fair enough. But there seems to be a lot of depth to this game that could really make it a unique adventure experience. The cyberpunk city with odd inhabitants seen through the eyes of a cat with a little drone on its back is just ripe for environmental storytelling, mysteries, and fun little puzzles. And on top of that, the game just looks cute as hell. Look, the robot gets a little love sign on its screen and waves at you. That's adorable. Stray is meant to hit in early 2022, although we're pretty quickly exiting that time frame, but when it does eventually release, I think it could really capture a wide audience and provide a somewhat peaceful but still occasionally intense adventure experience that'll make a mark through its fresh ideas. And that last little bit can also pretty succinctly explain the allure of Somerville, another game that I've mentioned before on the channel, but I often forget is set to come out soon. Which is kind of wild because there's a base excitement that comes from the fact that this is a game from the co-founder of the beloved studio Playdead, responsible for Limbo and Inside. Somerville maintains the eerie nature of those games with a bit of an expanded scope and more overt sci-fi themes, and it just feels like a journey that you don't want to miss. According to the other co-founder of this new studio, Studio Jump Ship though, Chris Olsen, the game doesn't fall under that same cinematic puzzle platform umbrella as those Playdead titles despite the initial resemblance. Apparently Somerville isn't much of a puzzle game or a platformer, and Olsen's mentioned that he has trouble describing what the game actually is in words. But that mystery makes the game even more intriguing, and I can't wait to see what the new team has cooked up here because it sounds like something really special. One game that admittedly I have as many reservations about as I have excitement for is Steel Rising, which might remind you of another announced game that may have captured your attention, Lies of but that game comes out next year, so let's ignore it for now. Steel Rising is a Souls-inspired ARPG that features automatons inhabiting Paris during an alternate version of the French Revolution, coming from the developers behind Greedfall. The setting, design, and ideas, as well as some of the focus that's been put on the story and the lore are all really interesting, but admittedly the gameplay that was shown off recently felt a little bit choppy. There's still plenty of time before the game launches in December to iron this stuff out, but a lack of polish was something that Greedfall was somewhat known for, and the issues in the Steel Rising gameplay include include some really poor frame rates, occasionally stiff movements, and some really odd animations like this run cycle. Putting so much emphasis on the combat might end up being a mistake, but there's also a clear potential here if some of the finishing touches really tighten up the experience, so it's something worth keeping an eye on despite its shortcomings. And lastly, here's a bit of a weird one. Saints Row. Yeah, am I the only one who's constantly forgetting that Saints Row is supposed to come out this year? And am I also the only one who thinks there's actually a shot for this game to do well? Look, I know that parts of the trailer look generic, and it was unfortunate knowing that they weren't going fully back to their roots while also not wanting to commit to the craziness of later games, which has made most fans a bit tepid on this new entry, but I think this game could take over the role of a Just Cause title and be a big, dumb, fun experience that's enjoyable to muck around in between the more serious stuff. Saints Row definitely won't end up being a game of the year contender, sure, 
but I won't hate on anyone trying to bring back that wacky open world experience that we haven't seen much of in the last five years. I think this could end up pretty all right. And honestly, I think all right is all you need from a game that'll act like a no holes barred palette cleanser over the summer. Anyways, uh, that's some of the stuff that you may have forgotten was coming out this year. It's not everything I'm excited about. I left out a ton of indies, for example, uh, but it's most of the stuff that doesn't immediately come to my mind when looking at the rest of the year and the supporting games that come between the big ones. If you have any others that you're excited for, but feel like I've been lost in the noise of everything else, let me know in the comments. If you're new here, leave a sub. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.